Hey guys, it's Jake here with eTrailer. Now in order to ensure proper operation of your refrigerator, your AC unit, to make it most comfortable for you when you're sleeping, when you're cooking, all these things are gonna rely on how level your fifth wheel is. Well today we're gonna go over the three simple steps of how to level your fifth wheel. That is leveling from side to side, front to back, and then stabilizing your camper. So a few things that you're gonna need are gonna be leveling blocks, wheel chocks, and some sort of level, whether that's on the camper like I have, or you have a separate carpenter's level, and you're gonna either put it on the floor or put it on a straight piece of trim in order to see how level you are. So when leveling your camper from side to side, if you have a self-leveling system on your fifth wheel, you're still gonna have to level from side to side with blocks first, because the system that is built in to those leveling systems is not designed to make up for extreme angles. I have a friend of mine who expects his self-leveling system to lift the whole side of the camper, and it's not designed to do that. So you need to take up most of the, um, the space with leveling blocks first, and then just use the self-leveling system to stabilize and make minor adjustments. So you can see here with our side level, we are off by at least two, maybe three marks. Um, so we're going to have to use a couple of leveling blocks on our driver's side in order to level it from side to side with our passenger side. So I know that if my bubble level is two notches off, that I need to be at least two uh, one, one inch leveling blocks high. So we'll set them up. And this brick style is nice because then they'll lock in together and all you have to do is pull onto it. When using leveling blocks to level out your camper, um, you're most likely gonna have to get some taller, uh, I prefer the rubber uh, wheel chocks because your the smaller plastic wheel chocks are not gonna work anymore if you have your camper up in the air. So we'll stick our wheel chocks in and then we're ready to go to the other side and chalk the other side. So we can see here by looking at our bubble level, now we are level from side to side. Next thing we're gonna need to do is step two and that is leveling the camper from front to back. In order to do that, we need to uncouple from our truck first and see where we're at. Now that we're uncoupled from the vehicle, you can see either the bubble level on the side of your camper or the carpenter's level. You can use either a piece of trim, like we said, or put it on the floor in your camper. And now you can see for us, we are just slightly off in our bubble, a little trick for you. It needs to go whichever direction um, the camper will need to lean. So. Our bubble needs to come this way, which means the front of our camper needs to come up. Perfect. The last step that we need to do is we need to stabilize our camper. So for my camper on my fifth wheel, um, we need to just do the rear stabilizing jacks, um, obviously because it's a shorter camper, it's not gonna have stabilizers in the front. That's just what the main jacks are for. And there's two ways you can do this. You can do it the easy way or the hard way. The hard way is with the manual one you either get with your kit or with your camper or you purchase this separate, um, or you can put a three quarter inch socket in a drill and have it done in no time. Well guys, now that we've got all that done, you're ready to set up the rest of your campsite. Now one quick note that we'd like to make is that no matter where you're at, you do not want to put your slide out unless your camper is level from front to back. You risk the, the slide coming off of its tracks and then you have to have it professionally put back on the tracks, which is a big hassle. So we just want to warn you before you do that. But if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below and we'll see you next time.